Okay, uh, this is the back side of the board that has the um, surface mount capacitors on it. They're all 0.1 microfarads. And uh, you can see there's quite a few, quite a few in the back here. Uh, let's see here, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So there's 16 parts that have to go in the back here. So uh, uh, this is really hard to do through the camera. So uh, um, I'm going to put uh, blobs of uh, solder paste on all of these and then we'll mount some up. Alright, so I've uh, put some blobs of solder paste. Uh, the amount of solder you paste you put on is kind of uh, just by eye. You have to kind of get a feel for get a feel for it. And uh, then uh, you take the little the little parts and kind of jam them down on the board. If you um, don't push them down then what will happen is when you reflow it, they'll kind of do the tombstone thing. And they'll kind of pop up. So uh, it doesn't really matter if you uh, get them perfectly centered or if some of the solder's off. When it, when it um, heats up, uh, it'll all be good. Um, but the one thing I notice is you do have to kind of push them down to make sure they're kind of stuck to the board. Then, then uh, you'll, you'll know that the surface tension will hold them where they are. Um, so, yeah, that's a tip. Alright, you probably caught that on camera before I did. Um, some of these parts are capacitors on the back, like these, and they're labeled C. C7, C6, C5, yeah, great. Uh, the ones up here, in fact the ones I was showing on camera, are actually resistors. Uh, R1, R2, R3. So, um, do not load capacitors where there are resistors. So luckily I caught this because uh, I kind of ran out of parts. I had 16 capacitors and there was more than 16 spots on the PC board. And I couldn't figure out what the heck was going on. Um, so uh, there are some spots for resistors and they're all 10K resistors, um, 0805 packages. Um, and the original listing says that um, capacitors and resistors would be supplied as his supply lasts. So I guess his... Uh, uh, resistor supply uh, ran out, but he did give me the uh, capacitors, which was nice. Um, so I have uh, uh, some 10K uh, L0805 resistors, so great. Um, so I will load those in the R spots. Um, I believe there are six, uh, six spots for resistors. Um, and um, one here, and uh, five over here. So I'll get the resistors loaded up and we'll have resistors and capacitors on the back and uh, put them in the oven. Alright, so while the uh, parts are in the oven, let's take a look at the, uh, take a look at the schematic here. Um, we have um, uh, Z80. Uh, a nice connector here that brings all of the uh, bus out. Um, the UART. Um, not sure what part number that is yet. Um, a 28C256 um, ROM, a 32K RAM. Uh, so this is probably split up so the bottom 32K is ROM and the top 32K is RAM. Um, the two RS232 transceivers. Um, two clocks. Uh, this is the 8255. This is the um, the GAL part, the uh, 16 or 22V10 I guess it is. 16, I don't remember now. Um, and so it's generating the uh, ROM chip enable, the RAM chip enable, the UART chip enable, and the uh, 8255, the PIO chip enable. It's also uh, generating a reset signal. Um, oh, not reset comes in and reset goes out, so something must have needed an inverter somewhere. So it just acts as an inverter. Um, bypass capacitors, reset. Um, yeah, pretty simple. Oh, the uh, capacitors. Uh, here are the bypass capacitors, these capacitors. We have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 16. So those are all the capacitors. And then the resistors are here. Um, some pull-ups on the interrupts and weights and stuff like that. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so that's uh, what's going on there. 
All right, let's see how we did. Uh, here are the resistors, the uh, 10Ks. They look great. And let's find a capacitor. Capacitor looks good too. Let's find some other ones down here. Uh, that guy looks a little dodgy. Uh, I think he's I think he's fine. Okay, everybody, everybody is where they need to be. Looks okay to me. Well, this is what my uh, junk box delivered. Um, I have a lot of the parts. So, I have an old uh, Zilog part. Uh, 6 megahertz part, which is what this board supposedly runs on, or the software was written for 6 megahertz. Um, I have my Maxim chips, uh, connectors uh, from the Zeta program, uh, 82C55 of course. Um, this also comes from the Zeta board, the 8.1 megahertz clock in the small package is what I had. The Zeta board allows you to either use a big package or a small package. But this one's laid out for small. Um, I will have to get a 6 megahertz small oscillator. Uh, that should be easy to find at the local junk store. And um, I have some RAMs on order. I uh, found those on eBay fairly cheap. Um, so I'll be getting some of those. Uh, the only other thing I need to do is take a look at, uh, see if I have an 82C256. I may. I need to scrounge around and check the pinouts. Um, so I might not have to buy that one either. The only one in question is this uh, 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 UART chip. Um, Zilog made a, a, a chip called the Z80 DART, D-A-R-T, and a dual asynchronous uh, chip. And uh, after making the Dart, they also, or I don't remember what the order was. They came out with the Dart, and then they came out with the SIOs. Maybe the SIOs came out first, and the Dart was a, a reduced function chip. Um, I do have an SIO slash 2, um, and I don't know if that works or not. So I emailed the guy who sold me this board, and maybe he would know. Um, and... Uh, if not, I'll have to buy a chip, but um, I do have this one in my junk bin. So, I uh, don't need to buy many parts, but I'll need to wait for some in the mail, and I'll need, need to make a trip to the junk store. Um, should be able to get it going. <coughs>